Hi, uh, very good morning. Uh, I'm very sorry for keeping you waiting. So let's start our session as soon as possible. So in this uh, live session, we'll focus on the following topics. Very simple, easy to understand and correlate clinically. So we'll discuss various signs and symptoms of shock, the causes, the management aspect a bit in detail, and also we'll have some critical analysis. So we'll do this in the form of a textbook review. So for which I'll be sharing you some information in our updates group very soon. And also I have some questions alongside the information which I'm going to post you. So I've highlighted certain key areas and also I've posted some questions. I've written some questions myself over there. I'll be sharing this very soon in updates group. And do let me know if it is streaming fine or if you have any issues with audio. Can we proceed? Yeah. All good, fantastic. So I'll post the information and updates group. Just check it out now. And then we'll start with our literature review and simultaneously we'll go through the questions as well. Yeah, I posted some information as you can see, it is from the book, Dental Management of Medically Compromised Patients by uh, Little and Fallis, eighth edition, okay. So just go through the information which is given over there and simultaneously, We'll briefly discuss it and we'll also try to analyze the questions which I have given you. Yeah. So as you can see, syncope and psychogenic shock. So what is this all about? And we'll also look into the signs and symptoms, the causes, and most importantly, the management part, which is very critical. Fine. Okay. So as you can see, syncope and psychogenic shock, the signs and symptoms include the following. Pallor, sweating, nausea, anxiety, pupillary dilation, yawning, decreased blood pressure, bradycardia or slow pulse, convulsive movements, unconsciousness. So signs and symptoms are very important. And as you know, the difference signs are those which are elicited by the operator. Symptoms are those which are... Uh, mentioned or given out by the patient as such. So what could be the cause of syncope or psychogenic shock? So cerebral hypoxia, cerebral hypoxia, sitting or standing stiff, anxiety, etc. But here, if you can see, there is a mention, uh, there is a mention about uh, cerebral blood flow, reduced blood flow to brain. So the question is, what is the threshold value beyond which we see this uh, symptoms of syncope? Or does the patient experience syncope? I'll repeat, in case of cerebral hypoxia, when do you say it is hypoxia based on the blood flow values? What's the threshold value? Uh, I want you to find out. Okay, and coming to treatment aspect, we have a protocol, as you can see, P, A, B, C, D, E, F. But remember, this protocol doesn't remind the same for all uh, kinds of uh, emergencies. It varies. We'll discuss that as well. So in the treatment part, you can see first starting with P, that is positioning. Place the patient in supine position. In fact, uh, whenever a patient falls, we tend to rise them or lift them up. That should not be done. Place the patient in supine position. Lower the head slightly and elevate the legs. In case of pregnant women, you have to roll the patient onto the left side and assess consciousness. So why in pregnant patients should you roll them onto their left side? So what's important and what has to be considered in that context? So why? And then coming to airway, ensure that the airway is open without any blockage. And breathing, check breathing, it has to be adequate. So when do you say it's adequate? So what's the normal breathing rate? And then coming to circulation, check carotid pulse. So at what side do you check carotid pulse? And coming to D, dispense or administer oxygen at a flow rate of five to six liters per minute. Consider this very, very important. And that's the reason why I've underlined and highlighted the same. And also aromatic ammonia, like valproate, I mean, Vaporol, Vaporol, smelling salts, etc. And cold compressors applied to forehead. And then E, ensure that vital signs, drug administration, and patient responses are properly monitored and recorded. So what do you mean by vital signs? Uh, in any context, what are vital signs? That's another question. 
And then F for facilitating next steps in medical or dental care and reassuring patients, which is, of course, very, very important. So if you look into the bottom uh, question, I mentioned as a sequence universal. So does this sequence remain the same? That is positioning, airway, breathing, circulation, definitive care, or dispenser in this case, and then E for ensuring vital signs are all okay, F for facilitating next steps. Does this sequence remain the same? Or is there any change depending upon the emergency? That's another question which I want you guys to find out. So syncope and psychogenic shock. Also, are these terms similar or are they different? Syncope and psychogenic shock. Because a few of you are asking like, which is syncope, uh, which, which is uh, shock, etc. So also find out if syncope and psychogenic shock are same or different. So consider this as your assignment simultaneously. And we'll discuss the answers in tomorrow's live session.